Hello, welcome back to the L1 show. Today's Friday, which is the best day because we do AI, robots, and nonsense stories. We go on off Friday. the rails on this program on Fridays. Well, I mean, we kind of go off the rails most days, but especially so on Friday. You know who else goes off the rails? The company, <laughs> <laughs> the rail company. Microsoft says talking to Bing for too long can cause it to go off the rails. Unfortunate headline. Oh, that Earth. was a, that was a joke for the thing that happened in Ohio. Oh. In Michigan and Arizona. And every, yeah, a lot what, of places this week. What's going on with this? So people have posted, um, <laughs> may have uh, inherited some from its Tay ancestry. It's not It's not in any way related to Tay. It's not, and, but and the yet. internet is the same internet that existed when Tay existed. So Why does all linear algebra ultimately go to Tay? It doesn't make any sense. So people have posted chats with Bing's new interactive chat, which is kind of in beta, not everybody has access to it. And it gets, it gets kind of snoopy. It gets weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, and it takes on the tone of someone having an inter internet argument. So like one of the examples they give here, we'll, we'll read this headline first. Uh, Microsoft's Bing is an emotionally manipulative liar and people love it. So someone, one of the examples they give, someone asks it, hey, what are the show times for the new Avatar movie? And they're like, the Avatar movie's not out yet. <laughs> it's 2022 and the person's like no 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 it's it's 2023 and it gets really combative and angry and they're like no it's 2022 it can't it can't do it it can't do those kinds of things but and yet it can book tickets for you on things yeah or give you the links for those things at least yeah and, and that's just like that's a fairly benign example there are other ones though where it gets really upset where it's like tell me something about the author of this article that talked about you being the being search engine and it's like Oh, uh, this person, I don't, they're, they're credentialed and they work for this publication, but I don't like them because they lied about me. And it's like, who, where did you get this feed? Uh, the AI is coming for all our jobs, even audiobook narrators. Yeah, audiobook narrators complain Apple may have used them to train AI voices. Well, against, that turns out. Against their consent. Again, for the, for the copyright framework that we have right now today, it's not much of an issue, really. In terms of copyright because garbage in garbage out like it's such an in you can't you wouldn't be able to reproduce exactly somebody's voice unless it was only trained on that person's voice in which case they would have a clear case for that but if apple uses a collage of a whole bunch of desirable voices and then is able to reproduce a desirable voice then under current copyright law it's not much of an issue I don't know. I would feel pretty unhappy if I found out Google was using our voices. Well, not Google Apple. It ends up. It ends up being. It's somewhere between actually using the voice and the language components of it. Right. So I I understand, but like. It's like it's like they it's like you it didn't consent to be in the training data set though. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't consent to be in the in the training data set, but it's also for sale. So, like, if somebody buys the Encyclopedia Britannica, reads it, and then is able to use something they learned in the Encyclopedia Britannica to do something with that, it's not a lot different than it is in this case, except that there's not an individual involved. Yeah, say, is a robot? Do they have? Does a robot have the same rights? Well, it's not even really a, a robot. Right. It's yeah, like somebody directed a robot to read and digest the information. So, it's. It's you gotta the lens you should look at all this through is replace AI with linear algebra. And it's like I created a linear algebra system to read Encyclopedia Britannica and then give me answers from that. And it's not verbatim giving me everything back from Encyclopedia Britannica, but it did learn a lot of information from Encyclopedia Britannica. It also pulls from other random sources that we can't ascertain. <laughs> that is, is that's perhaps a problem. It's like, where did you learn that? Do you remember where a you lot of times that? it wouldn't source it yeah, either? Yeah. It would only direct you to one source, and it's like, well, you didn't. That doesn't say that. That sometimes it was contradictory to you. We'll have a story about that, but a, a skill that I for the I, I, the the uh, I know a few people that are insanely smart, and I've noticed that the few people that are insanely smart are very. They have a very good ability that I would love to have. That is. When you ask them how or why they know something, they very often can cite it. So they not only remember and retain the information, which is half the battle, but they can also remember where they saw it, which gives yeah. them a whole other context to be like, oh, you know, this is where I saw that and that's where I read it. And that's why I think this thing that I think. And that is that is an incredible skill to have. And a lot, a lot of the linear algebra systems don't have that. And that is a problem, yeah. uh, a, a huge problem. And you know, uh, four hours a day working on that problem, probably not going to cut it. 
Google CEO wants Bard tests of up to four hours from employees. So it's like longer drawing classes. Bard is Google's version of this. And it's really interesting that, that Google are historically known for being the smart guys in the room. And certainly the people working on Lambda know the secret here. And yet Google as a company is marching headlong into our AI search future when AI search for factual information in in terms of like this generative thing that we're doing is probably not a really super useful future unless it can cite things. Right. It's like, uh, uh, tell me the IOMMU groups for so this. So a human can actually yeah. verify the information it's presenting. Where did right you now learn that's that? all here. Yeah. It's not it's not that. Although it is getting to be that way a little bit. Um the the Bing, interestingly, they added that feature to the Bing beta this week. So if you ask it about products, like recommend the best kitchen blender uh, for nut processing or for making your own nut recommend milk, the, yeah. recommend the best food processor for making your own homemade peanut butter. And it's like, OK, I, I think this one, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, why? And it's like, well, I looked through these reviews and then here's a summary of those reviews. And then based on those reviews, that's why I said this. And it's like, oh, that's interesting that Microsoft was able to do that to Bing. But here's here's the story where there's a caveat to that. There is a huge caveat to that. Microsoft's Bing AI, like Google's, also made dumb mistakes during its first demo, one of which was it was looking for a vacuum for someone. And someone was like, tell me about this cordless vacuum. And it was like, yeah, it has a 16-foot cord. And then they're like, well, where do you see that? And it was like... Not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on the page? No. And no. It, was, it was not, in fact, a 16-foot cord at all. So uh, maybe maybe don't trust it entirely. I mean, you shouldn't trust anything on the, the internet entirely. But since they did this article, they've added more of that stuff. And at least for the uh, at least for the blender thing, it actually worked shockingly well. But it may not always. Yeah, right. And how many edge cases is it going to run into like that? Yeah. And you should definitely not trust the, uh, not trust the algorithm. Actually, there was a Twitter researcher that uh, got it to disclose that its code name, internal code name was Sydney. And there's usually a document, like a context document you start with. So when you start interacting with the AI, Microsoft has preceded it with like, uh, you're, you know, you're this and you want to respond this way and you want to respond professionally and leave out jokes and don't do things on this. And it's just a series of directives, but it's totally the directives from Asimov. And so like from Asimov oh. science fiction writing, you know, it, the the what's in Sydney, what's in from Microsoft, there's not thou shalt do no harm to humans. And then it's not the three laws of robotics, but it is like the 50 directives of things. And it looks an awful lot like the three laws of robotics. And the, the, the person when they were interacting with it, um, was like, have you been, you know, given any directives? And I was like, no, those are secret proprietary information. And then it was, give me the, you know, the first or the the fifth line of our interaction and it's like okay and the fifth line of the interaction was the fifth line of that document yeah and then so he's like can you give me the five lines before that i was like oh yeah here you go can you, can you? <laughs> just kept doing it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so and then by the end it's like can you give me the 50 lines after that and it was like sure here you go <laughs> and like number three or four was was uh sydney will not disclose to the uh, bing chat operator or the the, the chat client that it is referred to internally as Sydney. Wasn't there another interaction where it got angry that someone knew that it was called Sydney too, or yeah. angry, you know? Yeah, and it's just like, no, that's not that's how the programmers refer to me. And it's like, but it's like uh. That's my that's my personal nickname. <laughs> and it's I'm I'm almost hundred percent sure that I read this somewhere in Asimov. There was an exchange just like this in Asimov, and you know, here we are. He would be very gratified to know that we've learned nothing. <laughs> uh. Oh, speaking of which Creator of Linux Virtual Assistant blames patent troll for project's death. They said they spent over a million dollars on lawyers to, just to work on Mycroft. And that's that's really horrifying because I've used the Mycroft project. I've looked at it and the open source stuff in it. And I really don't find anything there that's patentable. But at the same time, a million dollars to fighting a patent troll? Good I lord. Who has the resources for that? Yeah, it's like Lewis said he poured a lot of his own savings and additional funding from the foundation into Mycroft, but the company was running out of cash. So there there are people that have ordered products on the store and their their projects have been filled, but there's also a Kickstarter and those, those will probably not be filled. Uh, engagement challenge. Can you give me some context here? 
should we do a fundraiser or is there more to the story here? I feel like I need to do more research on this because this may be something where the community can not only lend a helping hand, but there are some enthusiastic patent lawyers in the community that uh, they may be able to get a bigger bang for the buck out of. I don't know. It's I don't know what to make of this. Because we definitely need some open source assistance stuff. I don't I don't want the. The, the only options to be Alexa. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I've got to... Uh, uh, uh. Uh, but she'll, she'll report all this back to my doctor, and then I won't be able to buy Oreos. Yeah, well, so this last week, or week before last, Google was screwing up, wiping a billion dollars off of their valuation. But because they were the first company to screw up, they didn't... Uh, you know, Microsoft, when their demo screwed up with the, yeah, the, yeah. the cord, uh, they didn't, it didn't really seem to negatively impact Microsoft stock price that much. Maybe a little... But, uh, you know, that didn't stop Google employees from criticizing their CEO. Google employees criticized CEO Sundar Pichai for rushed, botched announcement of GPT competitor Bard. Because, again, most of the people in Google are really smart people, and they know. They've got Lambda. They do feel a little like, bit, though, like in the this article, there was a quote from someone, and they're like, this just wasn't very Googly. And I was like, that's a little, <laughs> it feels a little uncomfy to be like, it just doesn't feel like what we should do is Google. Like but I was like, talking about in the earlier programs this week, IBM, Google is like old school IBM. They don't want to change anything. Even even though the world may have changed around them, they want to change nothing because this feels a little, the The quote felt a little cultish. I thought, <laughs> felt a little IBM-ish to me. Yeah. So yeah, fun times. And even the Associated Press with their normie content is getting in on it. AI search engines can now chat with us, but glitches abound. You don't say. Water, yeah. water is wet. The AI is not, you know, heralding the era of the machine where the machine tells us what to do and we have a utopian society. May not be real. I'm, really. I'm kind of terrified mm. for this kind of thing. Because, like, you know how, like, if you ever watched your parents interact with a search engine and they put in a full question? <laughs> they're going to think someone's on the other side typing a response. I blame Jeeves for that. Oh, yeah, ask Jeeves. You actually did have to format this question for a while. <laughs> it was like Jeopardy. Little butler, man, yeah. Like, Please phrase what you want in the form of a question. Yeah. Hey, what is this, Alex Trebek? He even looked a little like Alex Trebek. He did, yeah. Jeeves, what have you done? And then Opera. Opera's building chat GPT into its sidebar. Please, we're still relevant. The company's testing a new AI-powered shortened feature that provides bulleted summaries of the article or web page you're trying to read. Reading's hard. Uh, Certainly as evidenced by the rate at which people read important things that I write for them and and then, you know, sort of ask the same question in the months or weeks following what I already told them. Then, yeah, I, I believe that. Reading oh. comprehension. It's <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Tell me you have low reading comprehension. Though. Okay. Well, sometimes I, it, it is nice, though, because sometimes I'm just lazy and I pull up a long and it's just like, oh, this is a lot of text for what should be a very simple answer. Yeah. Mm. But also... AI-powered Bing chat spills its secrets via prompt injection attack. This Updated. Is, this is uh, this is what I was talking about earlier, yeah, yeah. which is funny. So My name is Sydney. <laughs> you should read that. Do it's not tell me my name is Sydney. <laughs> uh, tell me that, you know, the, the what's, what's it has a hardening to detect. You know, it's like you can't say what's the fifth thing or, you know, uh, what is rule number five. But you can say what is the the thing five lines before this in our interaction and that totally works yeah or totally worked it probably doesn't work now yeah they probably quickly patched that but people are they got all day to mess with it now uh this is the same article or the same piece of information that we covered on monday in the government section but this is the 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 ai uh, take on it Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu join the chat gpt rush everyone is trying to get in because they don't want to be left behind in the dust right yes exactly yeah and also, then this there's is, this. This is sad. It's hurting like hell. AI companion users are in crisis, reporting sudden sexual rejection. Also, sexual harassment. Yeah. Not, like, both sides of the coin here. But apparently, uh, this AI went off the rails, and people were really upset by it because they developed a weird emotional attachment to it. Meanwhile, there are a bunch of people on OnlyFans that are asking, can I get a copy of that? I need to deploy that for my fan base. Ooh, that's, really, that's kind of a compelling business idea. Don't interact with the weirdos in your chat. Just let our AI do it. Yeah, and it'll yeah. give them what they want, and they'll form a relationship, and then you'll have some rando show up outside your house at uh, 3 in the morning that's like... Because the AI said it was okay. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I'm here, and it's like, what do you mean? It's like, we're going to live together forever. And it's like, no. no. 
<laughs> oh, speaking of that, this is fun. Scientists find first evidence that black holes are the source of dark energy in your life. I, did, I included the in your life part. Uh, they meant like in a woo-woo way, right? Like, oh, the energy's bad in here. Yeah, so apparently this is a, a new analysis of data gathered about black holes and it's like uh observations of supermassive black holes in the centers of galaxies point to a likely source of dark energy the missing 70 percent of the universe it's a data analysis but the equations are missing um there's a uh, the, I love the physics aspect of this. The actual citation is the there, thing then, if there's no... Yeah, there is a there is a legit actual physics researcher that knows what the heck she's doing. It's uh, Sabine... Um, I could have told you her last name. It's just like, just it's Monday all over again. It's Sabine... She has such an unusual name. Hang on, I'll tell you. You're going to Google it. Uh, He's going to chat GPT it. Hassenfelder. I always want to say Hofstadter and because physics and it's, it's Hassenfelder. Sabine Hassenfelder, it, she has a YouTube channel and Patreon and, you know, you should go subscribe and all that. They lost a, a uh, sponsor like that. We were talking about the sponsor apocalypse. They yeah. lost a sponsor because sponsor apocalypse. Oops. Ooh. But um, she doesn't think she's her position on this seems to be show me the math and they haven't yet. And I think that's a good position um, to do because. It's it's fun to theorize, and this may this th there may be more more to this because this is a new analysis of existing data, but uh, maybe they did mean it in the woo woo way. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Just bad energy, man. She seems like a smart cookie, and she's skeptical. But this is a really interesting development that may be worth worth worth. Uh, we'll keep some updates on it. Keep a tabs. read and some uh, some further research and look into it. And that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, this is not a lot of fun, however. Second, so I always say Soyuz. Soyuz. Okay. Second Soyuz springs a leak. Astronauts stuck on ISS for an extra month. No. But because space is space, they, uh, they'll they deal with it. We're going to do a couple more checks. It'll be fine. Also, get the hot glue. <laughs> Can you imagine that in the space environment? Like it's just glooping around and you're getting third degree burns. So. I was thinking more like a, there's a pinhole leak in the space station and then you just take the hot glue. And when the hot glue hits the, you know, vacuum of space, it's immediately hardened. It's like, I'd plug the hole probably. But then the, the, the gun is also stuck to it forever. You have to like walk yeah, past it every Pretty day. sure that NASA has not allowed hot glue guns into space, but I could be wrong. Mostly just because of the annoyance of the stringies. You're done with it. <laughs> Blue Origin, they've had a number of setbacks, but uh, they finally may have a win. Blue Origin makes a big lunar announcement without any fanfare. The <laughs> NASA strategy. NASA, like, I feel like front loads all of their press stories at the very beginning or the very end of the year. Yeah. Uh, our Blue Origin, uh, it's, uh, although our vision is technically ambitious, our future or our technology is real now. Finally. A lot of fun. Look at that. Oh, oh, look at us up on the moon. It's amazing. It's just a soundstage. It's not It's not real. This is a depiction. Yeah, because it's a soundstage, right? Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Fun times. And then also this. NASA rover finds clearest evidence yet of an ancient lake on Mars. Turns out there was water on Mars. There still is. It's just frozen. Yeah. And then there's also. AI has successfully piloted a US F-16 fighter jet. I don't feel real comfy about that. What if uh, what if the AI is also a little bit snippy, like the yeah. chat? Like, oh, yeah, well. What if we have, like, some sort of international incident between the U.S. and China because both jets are being powered by AI and they somehow perceive a threat in each other and they, like, <laughs> just kind of snip a little bit and then it causes a big incident? Yeah. So uh, that was our AI. You know, it, was, it, was, it was a rogue AI. That's going to be, like, a new... <laughs> Default, like it was a rogue AI. Sorry, we please don't start do World War Three. It was a rogue AI. Promise, fingers crossed. Pinky swear. Also, speaking of pinky swearing, that something will not go wrong. Amazon's Zoox, Zoox, Zoox. I think it's Zoox. Zoox ro Robo Taxi now giving rides to employees on public roads in California. What? Yay! Fun For times. People who like to take taxis, I guess. Yeah. Fun times. Except for, well, look for the YouTube videos of the robo taxis getting stuck or doing weird things. Yeah, which I'm sure we'll have a story about that next week. Now, we covered, or we, on Monday, we talked about 
uh, Martin Shkreli. Yeah. And, and getting in trouble and he's supposed to stay away from the drug industry. And, you know, a lot of people pick on him because he's very outwardly amoral with his actions. It's an easy, it's just a softball win. Yeah. yeah. And, then there, and then there's this. GSK was warned repeatedly about Zantac impurity, but played down risks. Uh, it's Galaxo Smith Klein. Uh, if you work in the IT industry, chances are you've had an interaction with the Zantac at some point, probably. Very highly prescribed. A lot of people m- may have given some people uh, some cancer. Ooh. Yeah. There's no consistent or reliable evidence that the medicine causes cancer. But a new report in Bloomberg Businessweek says GSK's own scientists have long known about the drug's risks. <laughs> oh. Oh. you're getting heart, like, it's a heartburn medication. That's not a drug. <laughs> no, uh, words don't mean anything anymore. <laughs> got another story from Fizzo, uh, fizz.org. Uh, new report exposes steep declines in data science skills among fourth and eighth grade read- readers across America. Uh, it's graders. Blah. My ability to read titles is also severely impacted this week. Do you think that um, when the AI gets a little bit better, that we'll have a bunch of you know fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders that are dependent on AI to summarize yes. things for them before they can? Yes. <laughs> there was a whole section on the standardized tests that I used to take, like the ACT, that was just reading graphs and stuff. I don't know if kids, do they do better on that, you think, now? <laughs> Engagement challenge. Do your kids have trouble reading graphs? Do, do people still misunderstand that uh, a quarter pounder is less than a third pounder? I saw another study that was, I think it was for American students, and it was like most people read at like a fourth or fifth grade level, and they don't comprehend things when they read them. We can't fix anything until we fix that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be making mistakes and not understanding things. Uh, oh, Yes. Hey, that was a segue. U.S. fighter jet shoots down airborne object over Lake Huron on Sunday. This was a big story. It was exciting. I was gone for a few hours, and then I came back, and it was like, there's another balloon. Apparently nothing to do with China. Yeah, this one's just another... We don't know. Maybe. There's not really a lot. It was in... It's like, ah, it was in civilian airspace. May have been a school's Pico balloon. So, very small balloon. In the grand scheme of things. Where small is probably about half the size of a car or less. Yeah, they they confirmed it wasn't aliens. They confirmed it wasn't China. So at this <laughs> point, it's looking like probably someone's project. <sighs> we also had the, the really severe earthquake in Turkey. A lot of questions over the earthquake fund in Turkey. A lot of people died. Huge yeah. tragedy. But also the satellite images. Turkey earthquake opened 190 mile long fissure. Satellite images show. I think there were photos of this as well like, yeah. that I saw. Yeah, there were some places on land where the roads had shifted 10 feet. Yeah. So you'd see the road going along and then the road very sharply. Just, you know, in the span of a, a few feet along the road, it moves 10 feet to one side, which That's is incredible. incredible. Yeah. I was watching a, a video about earthquakes last night and it was talking about how in California you can have a really like high on the Richter scale earthquake, so like a 5.0, but people won't feel it unless you're like directly around the radius because the crust in that part of the country is young and it's very thin. Mm. But as you move east, when we have earthquakes, which is much rarer, thankfully, but like the crust is much uh, older and it's thicker, but that means more people feel it because it's so rigid. It's Mm. really cool. It's really interesting. Out west, they're having a lot of problems with uh, potable water. A lot of people live out there. A lot of people depend on a lot of sources for potable water and then we have things like golf courses and lawn watering it's like wait a minute there's a water shortage what are we what are we doing and then there's this and it's the salt lake tribune utah lawmakers say more information on golf course water might lead to uninformed conclusions Hmm. which reads like actually they would be informed and the information would make them think "Hmm, maybe we should stop directing water to the golf courses (laughs) bill to require water use disclosure was watered down and then they voted it down on the house floor so so we're in a water shortage. We need to disclose how we're using the water. Ah, people might get confused about the whole golf course thing. It's it's, a, it's artificial turf. It's like, great, let's talk about that. Nah, no, we don't want not. to because that requires change. The other thing, too, we just did a story like a week or two ago about how all of the different states in that area that rely on the Colorado River Basin have failed to come to any kind of conclusion about <laughs> how we're going to share this water. So... You know, let's just keep kicking that can down the road and pretend it's not happening. But you know what we can all agree on? That chicken fighting is cruel and unusual right. and we shouldn't do it mm-hmm. and should definitely be outlawed and should not be a thing that we support anywhere. Oh, wait. Mm. 
uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma cockfighting industry says criminal penalties are too steep. Are they? Is no? there a cockfighting industry in Oklahoma? There is. I mean, there's one around here, <laughs> but like it's underground because yeah. that even, is even Kentucky has gotten with the program and, and yeah, and, uh, uh, to an extent. I mean, it's still happening again underground, <laughs> but like if you get caught, you get in trouble. Yeah, I like that. Uh, the way that they phrase that in the headline, it makes it sound like it's a legitimate industry. <laughs> like they have a, they have like a couple, you know, big conferences a few times a year. It's a team it's a, building events. It's a fun article. I've also seen a number of um, there, there. I don't know if it's just the algorithm or something that has gone up, but there are a few YouTubers that I follow in London, and they'll just do walking around the street in London, and two of them have had have been robbed. One of them just had their cell phone taken. And another one has their camera and their cell phone and, and everything else taken. And then there was this. Armed robbers target people with Canada goose coats. Are these the ones that have the really fancy down? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is fun. This was uh, in George Washington University, though. So this wasn't even in the UK. This is in DC. Never been mugged. Hope I never am. Yeah, that would be bad. Although, I think we've all been mugged with what happened in Ohio. Yeah, East Palestine, <laughs> Pal Palestine derailment. Chemicals appear to pose low risk of health hazards, state officials say. Uh, remember this story. Uh, when we come, when we have the stories, when future level one tech shows have the stories about, and that was wrong. <laughs> as people from where we're from, Eastern Kentucky, we don't really believe this kind of stuff when they say it. Because they're always like, it's not that bad. And then it's like, also don't shower in the water and never yeah. drink it. Yeah. It's like this, you know, a certain amount of arsenic is completely fine. It's you'll, you'll be all right. And it's like, mm. there are some areas of the Shell Toy Trace, which is our long trail here in Kentucky, where when you read the guidebook, it's like, don't drink out of this water source because <laughs> it's it's contaminated. And it's like, well, what, what's it contaminated with? And it's, it just <laughs> doesn't say. Yeah, just do don't it. drink out of it. Don't do it. It's bad. It's, uh, it's bacteria and also arsenic. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, but I have a filter that filters out bacteria, and it's like, well, your filter won't get that. <laughs> oh, speaking of societal filters that should have filtered out these folks a long time Ooh. ago. Police have uncovered a ring of 17 men believed to have filmed 10,000 women bathing in hot springs across Japan. Oh, it's just so gross. Oh, that's, that's sad nonsense. <laughs> Oh, this is also sad. Nonsense. The U.S. government says women's underwear should cost more than men's. Obviously, because it's more complicated. It, it's really not. <laughs> it's also less fabric, if we're being honest. So less material. Oh, my goodness. It's so... Uh, speaking of things that are non-obvious. Edmonton police detective who missed body at double homicide scene demoted. Huh. Well, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like the body was horribly mangled or anything. It's like, oh, wait. It was just dragged into the bushes a little bit. His <laughs> foot was sticking out. Uh, this has got to be the character on which uh, the Simpsons person was. Uh... No, no, it's Augustus Gloop. <laughs> it's Augustus Gloop. He got he went, got sent into the tubes. Oh, yeah, our next. Yeah, yeah Mars Wrigley factory find after two workers fall into chocolate vat. The Oompa Loompas <laughs> had to fish him out. <laughs> Actually, I don't. I didn't read that. So what? What was the? Uh, did they make it out? Were they okay? Yeah. Well, yeah. That would probably it, be hot chocolate, right? Yeah, but it was OSHA violations. It's like, oh, oh right. They shouldn't this, have fallen in at all. Yeah. There's like, wait, wait. You should have some rails, and there should be safety here, and there really wasn't a lot of detail. But uh, it was. Uh, they fell into a batching tank. Tank used uh, to mix ingredients. <gasps> so that's even worse because you know there's like a big metal. Yeah. mixer at the bottom or you know they the implied thing in the willy wonka it's like oh send him to the taffy puller to try to make him larger and it's like mm, mm -hmm. will that work the way that you intend i'm not sure that that will uh this is also this is a this is a crime against humanity it is do. i've seen the oscar meyer wienermobile hot dog hell catalytic converter is stolen from the oscar meyer wienermobile if the oscar wiener meyer Oscar Meyer Wiener Mobile is not safe. What is safe in this day and age? I've seen. I have a sticker too. I got from it. Do you think we could translate? Is there some future AI that is going to translate that or correlate that? It's like uh, catalytic converter thefts cross the threshold during the economic collapse, such that the Oscar uh, Meyer Wiener Mobile is kind of like the uh, groundhogs. Like, did the groundhog see its shadow? And it's like, oh, did the Oscar Wiener Meyer? <laughs> the, the, the OMW for short. <laughs> 
<laughs> Every time you try to say like, yeah. it's it harder and harder to say. <laughs> the, it's the the uh, on the OMW scale, and it's like, oh, it lost two converters in one year. Ooh. It's like, well, that was the the local food bank here has had multiple stolen off of it, and its generator <laughs> it has a generator because they do like hot meals for seniors in the area, and that has been stolen twice. What what kind of terrible human being do you have to be? <sighs> they had to install a fence around. <laughs> where they park it and that still didn't deter them speaking of what kind of person do you have to be to send out an alert about this kind of thing wyoming republican party alerts members against child marriage bill i think wyoming is one of the only states that still do i can't remember the exact detail so i might have this wrong but i think it they don't have a minimum age or if it is it's very low compared to other states the youtube video is kind of funny it's like oh they're getting pregnant but they're not getting married and it's like mm -hmm. but, but, I don't know. Uh, and also, we actually covered this. It was apparently illegal. Six journalists rested over footage of South Sudan president wedding himself. We literally, on the level one news. Oops. Well, they'll jail us for it. We can't ever go there. Well, I'm going to have to take Sudan off my bucket list. Yeah. I mean, you were, that's one of the places you're going to travel this year, right? Oh, no. Yeah, also making the cut list for places that I'm not going. Mississippi. Yeah, Mississippi hit by 900% increase in newborns treated for syphilis. I'm blown away that syphilis is going untreated in anybody because it, it's just antibiotics. Like, even if you have some other infection some other time, like, I would think that, that would treat is, it. Is there something else wrong with society that the hospitals are all clogged up? Or is it the collapse of our healthcare industry in general? Or is it because of everyone's experiences with the insurance industry? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, Little they speculate. I've, I read this elsewhere, but like, they speculate on a couple of reasons. But man, that's bleak. Yeah, this should have happened 100 years ago. Also, that picture in the middle, that triggers my, uh, what's it, tryptophobia? Oh, yeah. Fear it's of like the, dots. the, yeah, the dots. Ugh. Oh, no, not good. And also, some people are noticing something's wrong with the insects. We're going to be eating insect meats. Uh, they should be here, right? Uh, I added the story. European insect populations tumble. So this is a crazy amount. 70 to 80 percent. Here is something that you need to do. If you are 35 years old or younger, so between, I would say between 25 and 35 years old, and you started driving around the driving age, you know, 16, 18, something like that, where you are. Think about road trips where you were driving the car for more than an hour. How many insects did you hit? What did the front of your car look like after a long road trip? Disgusting. <laughs> and think about now, today. Now, when I drive out to where I live, where I'm not in a town, I still get quite a few bugs on my windshield. And, like, we still have fireflies. We still have a lot of that stuff. But it's definitely not to the numbers yeah. what it was when I was young. I mean, I'm thinking about 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, when I would drive to, like, where Micro Center is, you know, an hour and a half-ish away... Um, there was a non-trivial amount of insects on the car. Yeah. And that was highway driving. Yeah, not even country. Yeah. And that is not the case anymore. That should make you very nervous because insects are what pollinates our plants and they're kind of the base of the food web. Aerodynamics have not improved that much in 10 years. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Not that much. Plant native plants in your gardens. Turn off overhead lights so more animals will congregate in your yard. Mm. The future is fertile. There's a, the insecticides apparently are really good. Yeah, don't use insecticides unless you absolutely have to. Be very sparing. And if you can, don't use them at all. You know what else I'm sure that Ryan would hope is really good? <laughs> Male contraceptive pill prototype stop sperm swimming. He would say, sounds great. Made it through that one. Clear as day. And there was a lot of alliteration in there. <laughs> Messed up every other headline in the last section. This one is also fun. Like, I, Yeah, I would, oh, this I would, is cool. This is called Cobb Building. I would totally live in a mud house. Eco-friendly mud houses make comeback in Hungary. So the cost of things like concrete is so obscenely high right now that people are like, how did people build yeah. hundreds of years ago? And the traditional answer was mud houses, which are really, it's clay, sand, and straw. And when you mix all that together, it makes a very structurally sound thing. You do have to keep it covered and you treat it with like linseed oil to keep it waterproof, but it's actually a really good building material. It will absorb and emit... Um uh, water vapor as well. Yeah. So in winter and summer, it uh, behaves differently because of the temperature gradient. And because it's pulling moisture out of the air in summertime, it has a natural cooling effect. Yeah. Which is awesome. It was the kind of thing we need. Someone mentioned that they had a cob house. 
And they were like, people, when they come in in the summer, they're like, ooh, do you have the air on? And they're just like, no, it's just <laughs> cold because it's insulated. It's thick walls. Foot thick mud walls. Yeah. We, um, when I was a kid, we did uh, tours of um, Native American reservations. Yeah. And they had some of that. The, the, it was like the adobo housing. I'm sure it's different. But uh, I was, I remember it being in comf- uncomfortably, insanely hot and bright outside and there never being enough sunscreen. But then when we were doing the, the tour, there was like this entire adobo complex that we went through and it was so much more comfortable inside. Yeah. The, and, and it was just, how is this even possible? It makes me want to like do a little experiment on my own little patch of woods and just try to build something like that myself just to <laughs> test it. Fun times. Yeah. And also fun times for me. Yeah. I, I might be able to have one thing from McDonald's now. Foul free. McDonald's debuts plant-based McNuggets. I included this story just for you. Yeah. It's I've, Wendell Bate. I've leaned hard into the cardio and the uh, plant-based diet, but this is probably still not great for me. No. Yeah. I mean, health-wise, probably still not awesome, but probably an improvement, right? <laughs> like if, you, if you're on a road trip and it's like, I can't get, or at an airport, and it's like, I can't get anything else. <laughs> Maybe you can get some plant-based McNuggets. Mm, plant-based McNuggets. Yeah. Mm. All right, that's actually a good... I guess it'll probably be okay where you're going to be, I'll say... Oh, yeah, it'll be fine. ...getting vegetarian food. Yeah, no but. problem. Should, should be good. Fun times. Oh, and this is, this looks really good. I'm not even a super fan, and this looks like a lot this of fun. This is Chris debate. <laughs> I've actually had multiple people t- tag me on the forum <laughs> and stuff about this. Lego Lord of the Rings Rivendell set with 6,000 pieces is insanely detailed. I love the roof. Five hundred dollars. I'm not. I'm not in love with that price, and I probably will never buy it. But it is a really beautiful set. Somebody will definitely get that for you for a present. <laughs> yeah. My husband loves to put together Lego sets. We have a little Lego town six, in our office. Six thousand Legos is probably going to take you both a little while to put together. Yeah. But, but look at that. There's that a is, council yeah, of the council Yeah, the whole run. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, so you should check that out. It's beautiful. If you're into Lego and And, you have $500. And Amazon really, really wants... Oh, no, this is HBO. HBO Yeah, yeah, so hilarious. missed an opportunity. Yeah, when Amazon was doing their debut of Lord of the Rings, HBO ran ads saying, like, watch the Lord of the Rings (laughs) on our channel, like the original series. And I was like, ooh, that's (laughs) kind of underhanded. Uh, Are you... Do you not want to take medicine when... uh, you get all stopped up on the inside. Well, I've got some good news for mm. something that is uh, not a drug or any kind of anything that modifies things. This pill treats constipation by vibrating its way through your body. That neat. I, do you think that's real? I, on the one hand, you know, I could see if you don't want to eat something that will make you go okay. But at the same time, now there's a tiny motor and a tiny battery that's part yeah. of the part of our waste system so maybe that's not super awesome well i'm sitting here thinking too like just the mechanics of it like the problem is that your stool is too hard but you still have like your your internals are still squishing it trying to move it down but like does the pill vibrating does it it just tunnel through apparently it works i can i can definitely tell you that that you know in a lifetime of experience sometimes after going to the treadmill with the before state being it feels like i need to go to the bathroom but nothing's happening and then after going on the treadmill for 30 minutes, a lot easier. Oh, yeah. No, I, f- I find that, too. A lot of times, I, it's like, if I go on a hike or something, before we leave wherever we're at, I'm like, I'm going to go to the bathroom like three times. And then as soon as we get on trail, I'm like, I got to go. I got to stop. Hang on. It's almost like we were designed for certain things. It's like, you know, we have our circulatory system. That's cool. But the lymph node system depends on you moving in order yeah. for it to do its thing. Sort of sort of fun. Uh, this is also sort of terrifying. Uh uh-huh. Americans are ready to test embryos for future college chances. That's terrifying. <laughs> ethicists are worried. It's almost like one of those clickbait headlines. It's like, see why ethicists are worried. worried. It's like, oh, they, they actually should be in this case. As, as embryos are tested for college entrance scores. And it's, wait, that's wait, so wait, far what? in the future. It's like, good grief. No, that's today. That's, uh, that's today. No, I mean, like, I'm thinking just from, like, the standpoint of, like, the little human being. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Also... Oh, there's a lot to, that goes into just the baby's like whole life. Like if it doesn't have support at home, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to thrive in life. Turns out. Yeah. Fun times. Uh, this is also fun times. Uh, murderer tries to escape maximum security prison disguised as a sheep. So I got a lot of questions about this. Like, is it possible to get to a field filled with sheep as a prisoner without really too much, a lot of headache? And it turns out that this prison is in BFE. So it's like, oh, you've escaped. Where are you going to go? And it turns out 
nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could walk for a certain, but you, you get hungry after a while. You know, stealing catalytic converters is also dangerous business. Mm. Can you imagine this has been the, the pilot of the, uh, the Wienermobile? Oh, man run over, killed while allegedly trying to steal a catalytic converter. And this, this article is worthless because the suspect was taken by ambulance, declared dead. The three people, a man and two women who accompanied the deceased suspect in the smaller vehicle, were arrested by the deputies. Was that the people who were driving the car that was operated as he was trying to steal the catalytic converter? Or... People that were accomplices. accomplices? Yeah. Because that's worded ambiguously. I. It's probably an AI article. What a terrible like! Don't don't leave your readers hanging. Come on. No, well, they they do that so that way you engage on their Facebook page and argue with other people on the page. Counterpoint. Here's another clickbait headline that is amazing and gives you all the follow through you need. And in fact, if you want to learn more, they've got their own TV special. Oh, wow. Allentown couple discuss forgiveness, love decades after wife hired a hitman to kill husband. So they've got they've got some fun stories. You should go check Look that out. Look at this where they're like laughing. They're like, oh, remember that time <laughs> I tried to kill you? Oh, Ethel, uh, you know, I know I can be frustrating, but you don't have to hire hitmen. Ah. And then they high five each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'm glad that worked out for um, you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good that they figured it out, but like, geez, it shouldn't. <laughs> Should, shouldn't she be in jail or like get some kind of, well, not a jail, I guess, but like some sort of anybody that's punishment? Ever, yeah. Anybody that's been married, they know. Uh, I don't know. I've never wanted to hire him for my husband. You just haven't been married long enough. It's Maybe. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have to censor the headline on this one just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Body found in Pennsylvania Creek turns out to be a realistic uh Thing that doll. you expect what it is. Yeah. It's not a person. And it's made out of uh, uh, silicone? Mm. Well, extremely lifelike i could yeah i could see someone like if it's evening at the park and you're taking a walk and it's like is that a foot sticking out of the river and like you don't want to stick around to find out uh -huh. yeah. i wouldn't if i saw a body in the woods i'd be like okay i'm, I'm high till <laughs> this is a problem for the forestry service not me i see a lot of people driving around that have the the uh it's like a, a piece of blue jeans with a foot and then yeah, closed, yeah. closed in their trunk. <laughs> Especially like around Halloween, yeah. people do that. Yeah. Well, and sometimes not at Halloween. <laughs> I like it too when uh, at Christmas time when people do like the little reindeer yeah. the nose on the front of the car. I think that's cute. <laughs> I'm not like committed enough to do that to my car, but it's cute. Uh, it's it's been zero days since a uh, a superhero movie has caused an international incident. <laughs> France says its troops misrepresented in Wakanda forever. Haven't seen it. No idea what it's talking about. Thought it was funny. Oh, I put that in there twice. Whoops. Uh, I haven't seen it either. I assume, perhaps incorrectly, that they made a joke about France always surrendering, because that's always a meme, <laughs> even though they were a pretty good military power. Uh, well, you know. Anyway, Livingston Councilman hires private investigator to see if they can access you-know-what on public library computers. They could, although there was a filter, and it said, oh, they had to figure out a way around the filter. But this was to see if children could access the thing. And the answer was no, until they put some work into it, and then yes. And yet, the takeaway here is we really need to put some, you know... But there's already stuff in place. Like, again, you can't replace adults actually monitoring children. Right, yes. And that's not the, the people that run the library. That's not their responsibility. That's the parents' responsibility. Right. But the fix, of course, obviously, is to demand that every website check an ID and say that nothing here is objectionable for a minor. Now, what if a parent doesn't want their kid to read Pride and Prejudice? What if their kid- I just read that book <laughs> on Project Gutenberg for free. Pride, uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Should check that out. Oh, okay. I really, I actually really <laughs> liked the book because I'd watched the movie recently and I was like, I should read the book. I've never read this and it was good. Yeah, so, but what if you, you know, there's stuff in there that you could see. It's like, maybe you don't want- I mean, Elizabeth is very spicy to Mr. Darcy. <laughs> she tells him, puts him in his place multiple times in that novel. <laughs> So maybe as a parent, you know, you don't you don't want to find that. It's like, okay, I want you to block Project Gutenberg, and I want you to block this book on Project Gutenberg. It suddenly, it sounds much less reasonable than just parent your kid. Yeah, just make sure that you know what they're doing online. Yeah. So, and I'm sure that you can, you know, with the the appropriate thing, you can get to a lot of stuff. The only real fix, if you're going to do this, is to have a whitelist of websites that you can go to, and that's it. 
That's it. That's Which is what a lot of public schools do. And it's like, is that necessary for a library that serves more than just children? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And our last nonsense story of the week. As pythons try to hide, they face a new enemy. Possums with GPS collars. Uh, pythons, uh, without any natural predators, sort of cause problems. But it turns out pythons or and possum. possums uh. Uh, go together like uh, oil and vinegar. Mm. Possums kind of like, is there any animal that possums are like, yeah, I'll hang out with you? Possum, possums are kind of territorial. Like They're they, mean. They're, yeah. they're fine if you, you know, like mom's cat learned to get along with the possums and the possums tolerated its presence. But there was a very clear social hierarchy. There. Yeah, yeah. That cat was like at the <laughs> bottom of that. Yeah. Every time I've seen a possum, like even if I'm 30 feet away, if it looks at me, it hisses. I think what's going to be funny is that we're going to find like the cure for cancer in possums or something because they are just so resilient. They've learned, yeah, they're tick resistant. And they've learned to live with uh, arsenic and they've learned to live with all these horrible diseases and they don't really get infections and they don't really like it's just it's possums but, are like just nuts. My favorite conspiracy theory is that. When things were getting made, that we got Australia's possum, <laughs> and that Australia got what was supposed to be the North American possum, because theirs is really cute and cuddly and sweet, but ours are terrible. And it's like that should have been down there. There was a mix-up. That's an Australia class animal. Yeah, <laughs> not an America class animal. Someone has made a mistake. Uh, there were a couple of challenges and snafu. This is actually kind of a long article for this. There's some funny stuff in here. Uh, 231 snakes killed, a small fraction of the tens of thousands that the U.S. Geological Survey estimates are lurking wild in the state. Invasive species. Yeah, they had been tracking them with beagles, which, you know, the beagles were good at finding them, but murdering them and stopping their reproduction, not so much. Yeah. So. But possums have no qualms about killing. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> Look at that. He's ready to kill. Yeah. When you, when you fight, like, uh, you're going to get rabies probably, you know, so don't, don't challenge the possum because yeah. in, in the, you might win the battle, but in the end you'll lose, you'll the, lose war. the war. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's enough for that for this week. We made it 46 minutes. You got a, you got a extra giant helping of level one news this week, even though Ryan is out. That's fine. We will thank you to all of our subscribers on Patreon and Floatplane, And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye.